If you're asked to draw something from your imagination, especially if it's a subject you're not particularly familiar with, you probably need some reference material to help you. And that might be from a book or a film or something. Most often these days, people would turn a computer on and have a look on Google. But I think there's a, a better way to create a more useful database of visual reference. Um, and that's to create one in your, in your own mind that you can call on wherever you are without needing to have a computer or a TV or a book. I find the best way to create one of these databases in your mind is to do it by drawing. Although you could probably also do it by taking the object apart and putting it back together again a lot of times. <laughs> but um, drawing is a bit less destructive. So um, over the last 10, 15 years or so, I've drawn hundreds, maybe even thousands of, of old cars from life. So I take my folding chair and my sketch kit and I sit down for anywhere between 10 and 10 minutes and maybe a couple of hours and I draw the objects in front of me. And as over time, as I've done lots of them, and lots of different ones, I've noticed how these vehicles and things are put together. You know, what bit joins onto where, what different materials they're made of, how different manufacturers have come up with different solutions to the same problems. And above all, you, you see this difference between different cars. You see how one differs from another. Why? And you ask yourself, why, why are they different? And, um, and all those kinds of things go through your mind as you sit there studying it for, a, for an hour or so. You just, your mind wanders. And that process of trying to capture what's in front of you and record it on the piece of paper down below is... It, it really burns it into your, your mind, you know, just because you've spent so long doing it and you've done it so many, so repetitively, it's sort of, it's just burnt in there and it makes it very easy to call back on, a, uh, call upon when you want to draw something from your memory. And also when you want to design something new, you can call on lots of these ideas and combine them in a, an interesting new way that hasn't been done before. And I mean, it's fine for something like old cars, but you might say, well, I've been asked to draw a dragon, <laughs> in which case you can't go out and sketch dragons. But um, in that case, I would go out and draw similar th things that have similar characteristics, maybe. So draw bats and uh, lizards and, ca and uh, crocodiles and uh, anything like that. And let's study the anatomy of those things flying things, reptilian things, maybe dinosaur bones would be useful to look at as well. And then you'd have a good knowledge of how an animal is put together to achieve certain a certain way of life or propel itself in a certain way. And then you could have a pretty good gap, a pretty good bash at drawing a, a dragon, I would have thought a believable one. And maybe one that's different to what most other people have done before in the past. Much better idea to do it that way than to just uh, rehash kind of film ideas that have already gone past. Anyway, back to the cars. Here I am nearly fi finishing this sketch, which I haven't used any reference for. It's just uh, out of my mind. But you'll have seen a few moments where I stopped and paused for a bit. And that was where I was deciding what direction to go in at that point. So maybe the, the first decision is just the basic proportions. What wheelbase are you going to use and what kind of shape is going to sit on top of those wheels? So doing quick thumbnail drawings of ve actual vehicles is a really good way to quickly learn different proportions of cars. Once in the specifics, when you start at the front there, we, the radiator can be square or arch shaped or round or sloping. And then you've got the mascot on top or maybe a thermometer. And then underneath the car, you could have maybe an under tray, or you might see the bottom of the engine and the, the uh, flywheel and the gearbox poking out the bottom. Sticking out the side, we've got an exhaust and that has a, a silencer, and that can come in lots of different shapes and sizes. And maybe the end of the exhaust has one of those Brooklyn's fishtails. On the side of the car, you'll often see numbers and brake levers and fuel pumps. At the back, you'll see a fuel tank usually, and maybe the filler or maybe the whole tank will be visible. And everywhere you'll see lots of rivets or ways to hold the car together. And those rivets are a good clue as to what's lying underneath the surface. Windscreens are kind of optional, but um, they might be small aero screens or kind of clever brass shaped things. The wheels might have sort of aerodynamic covers on them that hide the spokes. 
if you can see the engine, which you can on some of these old specials, you can, you know, that's a, another whole world there of different shapes and sizes from one single cylinder up to 24, maybe. At every point in this sketch, there is, you know, tens of possibilities that I could have gone in and I could draw hundreds of different types just out of my memory because I've got this database of different shapes and sizes to draw on. And uh, it's a useful thing to have. <laughs> I just need to expand it to incorporate other things as well, apart from just old cars. Hope you found that interesting. If you did, let me know in the comments and I'll do another one soon.